Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And in today's video, I wanted to discuss the change in hype that appears to have happened for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now we are a little over a month now away from Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl's release worldwide. And ever since around August, it feels as if there has been a big shift in the Pokemon community's expectations for BDSP. And in today's video, I wanted to discuss a couple reasons as to why I think that is. These are some of my favorite videos to do because I love kind of analyzing the community as a whole. So with that being said, let's jump right into things. Now I love Pokemon. I love YouTube and I love the Pokemon community online as a whole, regardless of how flawed or how negative it can be sometimes. If you were around just a couple years ago for the Sword and Shield hype cycle, you would know that when the games were first announced, it was mostly positive. People were decently excited about seeing a new generation on the Nintendo Switch, but the entire thing quickly turned south when they unveiled some of the things that were going to be coming to Sword and Shield in June of that year, when they announced Dexit which was became incredibly famous where a bunch of Pokemon were no longer in the Pokedex. They were getting cut from the game completely. Then the rush of criticisms came. All of a sudden, there were a ton of criticisms about the animations of attacks being used, the animations of Pokemon themselves, about the art style and the graphical capability of the game running on the Nintendo Switch. Every single thing that Game Freak was trying to build for this game came tumbling down on them. The community was outraged, and it produced a ton of discussion, not just within the community, but of people online examining the Pokemon community as a whole and trying to understand why a lot of these criticisms existed in the first place. It's interesting, because when Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were first announced, it felt that there was that same kind of trepidation. People saw the art style, People had expectations of what they were thinking uh, Diamond and Pearl remakes were going to be beforehand. I even did. I had a couple videos talking about what I wanted to see from Diamond and Pearl remakes, and everything kind of got flipped on its head. It was quelled a little bit because of the additional reveal of Legends Arceus, a more open Pokemon game we now know is not open world, that was coming out pretty much alongside Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, being developed by Game Freak. That lent a lot of, you know, more goodwill toward Game Freak from the community. But with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, while there was always interest, and I could see it on my channel over the months, there was some very strong online interest in these remakes. And it might be because they're remakes, they're telling the story of a really classic and beloved Pokemon game that was always going to be there. But it felt like the community had a little bit of doubt. The models didn't look the best. The animation didn't look great. Who knows if there were going to be more Pokemon than just Gen 4. We've been bitten by this before with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, with uh, Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. We've had issues with remakes in the past. And on top of it all, we were getting no new information from Game Freak. They were giving us no trailers. Besides a couple screenshots in the Switch OLED model reveal and an overall release date announcement from the Pokemon company, we didn't see anything until about the middle of the summer. And once we started seeing some new things for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, it feels as if from my end, the perception from the community began to change. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching this video aren't subscribed to the channel now. Of course, as I always say, subscribing is free. You can unsubscribe at any time. And it would really do a lot to show me that you guys are enjoying this video and that you want to see more. So be sure to hit that subscribe button today so you never miss another BDSP video from this channel. In the middle of the summer, we finally got it. We got the announcement of a Pokemon Presents detailing brand new information for Legends Arceus and for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And if you were watching this channel at the time back in August, it was a doozy. We got a ton of new information for Legends and for BDSP that completely blew the original reveals out of the water. It was incredibly exciting, so many new details to dig into, so many things to make theories about and discuss ideas and concepts with your friends. The Pokemon community was jazzed. And a lot of that was for Legends Arceus because it continues to look incredibly ambitious and some of the things that people saw from the original trailer that might have made them doubt the game at first seems to have been amended at that time. 
But what we also started to notice was that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl looked a lot more polished. The environments looked a lot more vibrant. They looked like they had a lot more color. The character models looked sharper. The Pokemon battles looked a lot better. The models within those battles looked more detailed. The camera angles looked more professional. The overall presentation of the game looked better. That whole little line at the bottom of the screen that gameplay trailers will sometimes put, game footage not final, really seemed to be true. And in that same trailer, they unveiled features that weren't originally in Diamond and Pearl, which is not something we really expected. The Grand Underground with little coves that you can find wild Pokemon in and see different environments, and what you do in your secret base underground affects the environments that you can find. That's a really cool new feature for these games that weren't in the originals. And all of a sudden, all of everybody's hopes started to go up. We could see new features. We could see implementations from Platinum. There are so many new things with these remakes, and it felt like with the, with the arrival of new information from the Pokemon company, the veil was kind of lifted over Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And for a lot of people that I'm friends with, they were sitting here looking at these games and going, huh, I could play this. This could be pretty good. And it was really cool to see because I had always been pretty excited about Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. One of the first videos on this channel this year talking about the expectations for BDSP was one of those videos where I was like, listen guys, there could be a lot of stuff they're hiding here. But the community gradually started to change as we got more trailers. And it feels like for a lot of people, sentiment began to shift that we're really excited for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, maybe even a little bit more than Legends Arceus from some fans. And that's really interesting to see just because of how ambitious Legends is. And all of this is to say, I think the Pokemon community needs to learn a couple lessons, hopefully. As, you know, the game could come out, it could be terrible, and this video would be pretty much useless. But let's assume for a moment that hype is warranted, and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl come out, and they're really good, and they're a, they're a success, and people really enjoy them. There's a lot of lessons for the Pokemon community. And the first lesson is, games take time to be developed. This is something that uh, Nintendo fans experienced with Luigi's Mansion 3 a couple years ago. Back when it was first revealed, it looked rough, didn't look polished, looked very frame laggy, just the art style itself didn't seem to pop in the first reveal. People were optimistic, but there was a little bit of doubt about Luigi's Mansion 3 on Switch. But as we got closer to the game's release, the polish was incredible. The lighting engine got an overhaul, the animations looked pristine, and eventually when the game came out, people realized, wow, this is Luigi's Mansion gameplay perfected. It was great, and it was a learning moment for Luigi's Mansion fans, and I think we can take something similar as Pokemon fans. We're not always going to be able to judge the product when it's first revealed. We're used to, you know, for lack of a better way of putting it, handheld games that aren't as in-depth as console games, whereas development doesn't have to take as long. With Pokemon games now on the Switch, there's a lot more time and a lot more of a machine that you're putting this game on for development to go closer to release. And you could definitely tell that when they revealed these games back in February, they knew there was going to be a mixed reaction, which is why I think they unveiled Legends Arceus alongside BDSP because they knew, even though Legends Arceus, honestly, was not ready to be shown off at that time. Going back and looking at the trailer now, it wasn't in a finished state, or at least close enough to a finished state that we would have seen a trailer we should have. But they did it because they knew there was going to be a backlash for what they were doing with BDSP. Not only do I think as fans we need to realize that game development does take a while, we can't immediately judge something. We have to give it some time. We can't pass grandiose statements on a game and say, oh, it's going to be terrible. Oh, it's going to be great. First, when we haven't seen it close to finished. And two, when we haven't played it yet or average people haven't played it yet. And the second thing that I think we need to learn about BDSP, and this has been something that I've had to deal with and Zelda fans dealt with this a couple years ago, is that the art style can change. It's okay for developers to want to try something different. Just because something is different doesn't mean it's cheap, doesn't mean that it's something that's having less effort put into it. Sometimes people have a vision. Sometimes people have an idea of what they want to do with the game, and it doesn't follow what the, what the bigger audience wants. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be bad. 
The Link's Awakening remake had a lot of criticism because of its toy-like look. And now that people have played the game, a lot, most of them really like the Link's Awakening remake. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, it feels like, it's going to follow the same route. I will admit, when I first saw the trailer, that first reaction, I was like, oh, do we need this? Is this, is this really what Pokemon needs? And eventually I got on board, even though the one trailer we had did not look great. When we got that new trailer and we saw how much work had been put into the art style and how much more alive the world of Sinnoh looks, I was fully okay with it. Would I want mainline Pokemon games to look like this? No. But I think it's one thing that eventually the community will learn to appreciate about the Switch era of Pokemon games is how varied in art styles we've gotten from these games. We've had Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, Sword and Shield, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, three games with vastly different looks and feels. We've had spin-offs as well with, with, um, with the Mystery Dungeon remake. We've had a, such a, a large variety of games on Switch, and it's something that as fans we need to be appreciative. It, every Pokemon game doesn't have to be cookie cutter. I thought a couple years ago that was a problem the community had with Pokemon, that it never tries in any way to be different. But when they did try to be different, I think they got a little too much criticism. That's just my opinion, and it's my opinion largely as to why the hype cycle has kind of gotten better for BDSP, and why it feels like a lot of people are really excited for this game's release now. We're only a little over a month away from the game coming out November 19th. I am really excited to see what we'll see in the lead up to the launch, and then eventually playing through the game with you guys and discussing all of the things that are in it. But with that being said, I would love to know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Do you agree with me that you think hype has kind of picked up for this game, whereas it might not have been there at first? And why do you think it's changed if you think it's changed at all? Of course, as I mentioned before, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. It does a ton to show me that you guys are enjoying this video and Pokemon BDSP videos as a whole and that you want to see more. And of course, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.